Hi everyone, this is Ashish Dehani. Welcome to Infosec Train. So today, guys, we are going to discuss about a very well-known attack, cross-site scripting. So we all have heard about cross-site scripting, but we have to understand that how we can perform it when uh, there is a web application firewall in between. So if there are any ways that we can bypass a web application firewall and perform the attack. So let's see what is cross-site scripting first. So when we're talking about cross-site scripting, so it is the first thing we have to know, it is a vulnerability which allows the attacker to compromise the interactions that the user is having with the vulnerable application. So there is a policy which is known as same origin policy and it is designed to segregate different websites from each other. So this attack bypasses that policy and it allows the attacker to impersonate as the victim user, perform all the actions that the user is able to perform and access any of the user's data. So if the user is having any privileged accesses within the application, so attacker will be able to get the full control over the application's functionality and the data. Now, when we are talking about accesses, that how accesses works. So cross-site scripting, it works by manipulating a vulnerable website so that it returns malicious JavaScript to the users. And when the malicious code executes inside the victim's browser, attacker can fully compromise the interaction with the application, right? So now we'll see that how we can exploit that XSS vulnerability. Now, this is our lab, right? Now, in this, we have to perform cross-site scripting attack. So what I will do, I will just normal input I will give for cross-site scripting that we do. IMG SRC equals to one and on error equals to print. Let's say document dot cookie and close it, right? Now, my intercept is off, just click on search. It says tag is not allowed. So that means whatever request I have sent that is blocked, right? Now I will go to my proxy and HTTP history, right? And I'll see that if my search request is there or not. So this is my search request, which I searched. I will right click and send it to intruder, right? Now in intruder, we have the positions tab. So just clear all of them. And then I will just pick up this one, right? And instead of this, what I will write, the tags, right? And inside tags, I will add these dollar signs, right? So there we will be doing the attack, right? Then in the payloads tab, what I will do, I will put some payloads. Now what I want to find out, I want to find out the tags that are allowed, right? I know that the tag that I used, it is not allowed, but I want to find out the tags that are allowed. So there is a cross-site scripting cheat sheet, right? So all these are the tags, right? So I will copy tags to the clipboard, right? And after copying it in the payload, I will paste, right? So all the tags are there in front of me, right? And then I will click on start tag. So let's see what it gives. So it will take some time to complete the tag and then it will give me the tag that is allowed. Right. Once we'll find out the tag 
which is allowed then we'll find out more things right so it gave me the output and if i click on status so we can see there are two things body and custom tags right so we can use the body tag right so if you check the request search equals to body right so i will close this and i'll go to positions there i will write body and percentage 20 equals to one right and then in the payload tab i'll clear it out and from the cheat sheet i will now copy the events right so i'll click on copy events to clipboard and then paste now i have pasted all the events right and now i'll click on start attack so there are 109 requests that it will be sending and then it will give me the output so let's see which of the request is useful for us So now the payloads have been found. Now let's check the status. And in status, uh, we can see that there is on resize as well, right? So we can use on resize, on rate change, and on before input. So we'll be using on resize. So what will I do? I will go back and then there is proxy so i'll put intercept off and here i'll go to the exploit server right in the exploit server i will write iframe source equals to And here we will be pasting our ID, lab ID, right? So I'll paste that and then the whole thing. So So I will write here, question mark, search equals to, and the encoding percentage 22, percentage three E, and then percentage three C, body percentage 20 on resize, equals to we are calling the print function and then percentage 3e and after that on load equals to this dot style dot width equals to 100 pixels and close it, right? So this is what we'll be using, right? So I'll click on store and I'll click on de deliver the exploit to the victim.
right? And that's how we bypassed the web application firewall and did the cross-site scripting attack. Now, when we talk about the mitigation of excesses, so what can be the mitigations? Filter input on arrival. This is the first one. So when someone is entering, when the user input is received, so filter as strictly as possible. Encode data on output. So at the point where user controllable data is output in HTTP response. Encode the output to prevent it from being interpreted as active content. Then use appropriate response headers. So to prevent excesses in HTTP responses, which are not intended to contain any HTML or JavaScript, you can use content type header or X content type options header to make sure that browser interpret the responses in a way that you intend. And the last one is content security policy. So as a last line of defense, you can use this policy to reduce the severity of any excesses vulnerabilities that still occur. So this was about excesses and thank you.